Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Friday, and welcome back to Romance and Modern Mythology, Game of Thrones edition. This is our last couple. We're going to look at uh, Jon Snow and the Wildling Ygritte. Now, I saved them for last because uh, there's something about their relationship that it really is my favorite, how that developed, and just how how detached it was. It wasn't about, you know, politics or power or dynastic marriages or anything else. There was something very simple and honest about their feelings for each other, even, even though it was quite a mess. Now, uh, Jon Snow, he was considered to be the illegitimate son of Ned Stark. Uh, we, we did not find out until later that he was actually the perfectly legitimate son of, um, of a Targaryen and uh, Ned Stark's sister. Um, but he didn't know that at the time, and Egret certainly didn't know that at the time. No one was aware uh, during this in, when their entire relationship took place. So he was just considered to be uh, the illegitimate son of a powerful northern liege lord. Uh, and he, of course, he had nothing to inherit from uh, Ned Stark. He uh, had not been made, you know, a Stark because there was a process of, you know, quasi um, a process to legitimize illegitimate children of sorts. But that had never been done, and John had no expectation of it being done. He didn't really see a way to earn his fortune, but he wanted to be of service. He wanted to live a good, honorable life, and he had a very romanticized, idealistic. A view of what happened um, with the Brotherhood of the Night's Watch and how they guarded the wall and protected the realms from uh, the wildlings and, you know, other dangers from beyond the wall. So it was essentially what he saw as being his best option out of a lot of not good options at all. He didn't see himself as uh, really having a future. He never saw himself as someone who would get married and have family and, and all these other normal things. So he was never really expecting romance for himself. Not really. And he certainly wasn't expecting to find it uh, with this wildling who certainly lived up to her name. Uh, he, John had been on patrol um, beyond the wall uh, with other Night's Watch, some uh, quite experienced. Uh, there was an ambush. They were taken prisoner. They were separated. He had Egret as a prisoner. And uh, he was trying to get back to the wall or back to his unit, just back to something. And, uh, and of course... You know, she's not making this process easy on him, and she's arguing it with him every step of the way. And not just that, she's calling into question the very nature of the institution of the Night's Watch. Well, you know, what what purpose does it serve? It's like, well, they defend the land. She's like, it's not your land. We had it. You pushed us off, and then you just called it yours. <laughs> and, you know, on and on. And, and you know, well, you know why do... Well, why, why do men of the Night's Watch, why do they have to be celibate? Why why can't they do normal things? If someone told the wild, wildlings that, you know, they couldn't get together, you know, we, we, you know, tell them to go screw themselves and, you know, all this and that. And she's just constantly planting seeds of doubt of, well, okay, why are things the way that, it, that they are? And this is quite a big thing because uh, Jon Snow is not necessarily the most philosophically deep thinking of characters. You know, he's not unintelligent, but he is a bit more emotionally driven. He's a very, uh, he took after Ned Stark in a lot of ways. He uh, followed his example, and he was more so uh, pragmatism, a sense of honor, duty, loyalty, not really a disruptor of the system, whereas the grid was just, uh, why does the system deserve to exist, much less be followed? <laughs> there is something uh, very uh, radicalized about her that I kind of admire. Uh, ultimately, uh, Jon Snow had to pretend to join up with the Wildlings, partly as a as a manner of survival, uh, but um, partly was also to gain intelligence that he could later on take to the Night's Watch. Uh, he wasn't expecting it to get complicated, but uh, Ygritte decided that uh, she did want to make it complicated for him because, after all, he had a pretty face and it's cold nights, and uh, why shouldn't he... Uh, keep her warm. <laughs> and so she arranged for that to happen. And she actually specifically told him at one point, Aitha, you know, those uh, night watch vows, uh, you made some promises. I want you to break them. And ultimately he did. And uh, they did uh, eventually climb up the wall, get down to the other side, because it was part of a plan for their group to scout ahead before attacking uh, Castle Black. And, um, when it was eventually found out that, you know, John's allegiances had never really changed and, you know, he had to swiftly get away, 
uh, from their little their little band of wildlings. Egrit did manage to shoot him several times with an arrow, but she was quite an extraordinary shot. And there was um, another wildling told her that uh, if he was still walking, it was because she let him go. It's like, what do you need? I put three arrows in. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you take down a deer at, you know, however many hundreds of yards. If he's alive, it's because you decided he was going to live. Uh, they do meet one last time after this. It's during the battle when the wildlings are trying to take Castle Black. And um, they've they've gotten into the keep and a grit, you know, she's fighting. And then she and John see each other from across the way. And he sees her and he... There's this expression of joy and relief on his face. Like, and so he's, he's not just glad to see her. He's glad she's okay. He actually drops his guard. You know, he doesn't, you know, he's all, he has all but dropped his sword. I mean, he's just so happy to see her. And she's all aiming her, her arrow at him. But she's, she's hesitating. She's not going to actually pull, um, you know, she's, she's not going to let that arrow loose. Not this time. And you know it. And then just as you think that, well, maybe there's hope after all, maybe, may, maybe something can be worked out somehow. I don't know, but you just, you didn't have that sense of, oh, it's just all over between them until one of the uh, new recruits for the Night Watch put an arrow through a grit's heart and killed her right in front of John's eyes and just the agony and despair on his face, you know, he ran over to his corpse, he was cradling her and rocking her back and forth, just, you know, absolutely in grief and in pain, and uh, even as the story progressed for a long while, uh, notably the Red Priestess uh, once tried to seduce him, you know, for purposes of her own, and uh, his rep and his uh, response to her is, uh, you know, I, I love someone else, and she said, that someone is dead, and uh, he said, uh, it doesn't matter, I still love her, and you know, that just melted my heart every single time because it just called back to that that horrible tragedy of, of having someone you love and care about taken from you because of uh, political issues, uh, because of uh, the inconveniences of uh, the world as it currently is, and um, things just getting in the way of honest human relationships. And it just made me grieve for him all over again. I, uh, I was not best pleased uh, that uh, Jon Snow was uh, later paired off with someone else later in the series. I thought that was rather clumsily done, especially when you compare it, you know, that relationship, I guess we'll call it, to the bond that he had between himself and Agrit. I mean, there just is no comparison. There was one that was just honestly two human people coming together. And then there was this odd thing at the end when all of the writing went to pot. So, that's what I have to say about John and Egrit. I hope you've enjoyed the Game of Thrones editions of this series. Uh, we'll see what uh, happens with the storytelling videos in the coming year of 2022. I hope you'll be back for that. Uh, but until then, please visit us at Blackbird's Brew. There's a link to join in the description box below. And of course, subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave me a comment, and I will see you next time. Bye.